Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. If you like food that's quick, easy, delicious, with a little bit of down-home love and flavor, that's what you'll find here every week. In this week's What's for Dinner, it's got a little bit of a twist for you. I've got a couple of dinner ideas and some breakfast prep. So just sit down, relax, grab some sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Okay, friends, tonight we've got some chili going down. Hadn't really planned on chili, but that's just one of those things I always keep the fixings for. But do you remember when this happened? Yeah, remember that? My oven was doing that weird runaway temperature deal where it would get really hot and it didn't cut off when it got to the preheated temperature. Well, I was going to make a pizza for lunch in here yesterday and I was like, is my oven not preheated? It's been a while. Come in here and look. Now, it's only preheating to like 296 degrees and it won't get any hotter. I don't know what's going on with it. Anyway, it had done the runaway temperature thing like maybe three times I'm remembering that happening. But now I think we're actually gonna have to pull it out and my husband's gonna have to look at it here tonight. Um, it's baking season, it's Christmas, y'all. We gotta pray for a Christmas miracle. I do not want my oven to go out right now. Let me get these onions in my ground beef. That's a lot of onions too. I didn't realize. I'm not going to use all that onion. I'll save a little bit of that back for chili dogs because, you know, that's another meal we can make on top of the stove if we need to. Okay. You can see I got my ground beef going in here. Put those onions down in and brown it up. Anyway, we're going to have to pull that out. Number one reason I don't want my oven to be tore up, just because I don't want it to be tore up. I love this. It's not that old. I guess in today's appliance years, maybe it's old, but it doesn't seem like it. It's still really good. All the stove eyes are fine. I don't want to spend the money to do it. <laughs> and I don't want the hassle of it. I'm ready to get the holiday baking underway. And uh, also, I love this oven and stove. I love it so much. Whenever that runaway temperature was getting too hot, you could just, you know, reset it by cutting the power to the oven and letting it set for a few minutes and then you'd heat it right back up and everything would be fine. So I tried that yesterday when it was doing the thing where it was too low. No, that wasn't working. So anyway, my husband's going to pull it out tonight and look at it. Y'all pray for a Christmas miracle that it's a, something he can fix and with a little part and we don't have to replace the whole thing and big expensive thing that I just don't want to do. But anyway, I'm going to let that sit there just a minute and then I will drain off the grease. Here's what we're using tonight as always. I mean, show you I've got my packet of chili -o. This one's with onions. I got that by accident, but it really, I can't tell a lot of difference. And um, Sometimes you just can't find the regular, and so I've gotten it with onions, and it's fine. But let me show you this. Look what I found at Sam's here a while back. This is almost 20 ounces chili -o in the big container, and I've already done the math. It takes a half a cup out of here to equal one of those packages of chili -o, but I'm not going to open this until I get my little packs used up, and I believe this is the end of my little packs. So when I drain this grease off, I just put these items in. Anyway, we'll have um, maybe a what's for dinner this week of all ovenless meals. We'll see. Once I got all of my ingredients stirred in, I just brought my chili up to a bowl, covered it, 
turned it down and let it simmer for 15 to 30 minutes. This chili is my family's favorite. And as always, I'll have you a recipe typed out in the description box below or a link. It is definitely quick, easy, and delicious, and this chili -o flavor just cannot be beat. My husband likes his served up on top of corn chips, and I like mine with good old saltine crackers. Next, we're going to do some crock pot steak tips and gravy. This could not be any easier. I'm putting it on in the morning before I go to work. I start out with a sprayed crock pot and I'm going to add in one can of cream of mushroom soup and then I'm going to take two cans of water and add to that. I am using a pack of Lipton onion soup mix, dry, just sprinkled in there. And I use brown gravy. I like this Pioneer because it makes two cups. You can use whichever brand you like, but I do like to make sure if I'm using a different brand that a lot of them just make a cup of gravy and I'll get two of them because I like plenty of gravy and this is gonna be cooking in the slow cooker all day, so I wanna make sure there's plenty of liquid in here. So I'm just mixing up all my gravy mixture and I am gonna add a little bit of black pepper. I definitely don't put any additional salt in here because that brown gravy and soup mixture is really salty. And I have two packs of lean stew beef. These are probably a little bit less than a pound each. I did sit them out in the refrigerator last night, but they had not thawed out completely, but that's fine. I just put them in there and kind of chopped them up a little bit, broke them apart, and put the lid on. I let this cook on low all day long. When I say all day long, I mean I put this on at 7 o'clock in the morning and I did not get home until 4 or 4.30 that day. Look how beautiful, rich, gravy covered steak tips these are. They are just so good and I did not even need to thicken up my gravy. This was perfect. And you will see us eat green beans a lot. And every now and again, I just like to show you what I put in them that my family loves. I will put in bacon grease, or in this case, I just used a little bit of cooking oil. And I'll throw in a tablespoon of butter and some salt and pepper. And that is all I do to them. I turn them up on high and get them to cooking pretty hard. Then I just turn them down and let them just simmer until we're ready to eat. I made some instant mashed potatoes. Of course, I just throw salt and pepper and butter on those. This was a great way to have a good hearty dinner without using my oven. So that is where we stand on that. This whole week, I did not have use of my big stove oven. My part should be in somewhere between the 14th and the 15th and we'll see what happens from there. But I served this up. This is my husband's plate. I just put his over mashed potatoes, green beans, and then there is just a piece of light bread. Next is some good old fashioned shake and bake pork chops. You have probably made these or seen these before, but it's super easy. I'm just using the Kroger brand of shake and bake. It comes with the bag and the seasoning, and I have the thin boneless um, pork loin chops. You just put a couple in the bag, shake them, and put them on your pan. Now, how am I going to bake these without an oven? Well, I did break down and purchase myself this little Ninja. I got a very good deal on it. I ended up getting this for $149, and I'm so excited with it. And I baked them in the Ninja. This little thing can air fry. It can cook like a regular oven. You can dehydrate in it, toast, and do all the things. And I wanted to show you this so you could see how roomy it is. This is the pan that comes with it. And I have all eight of these chops on here. The first thing we made in it was this pizza. I want to show you how this is like a regular DiGiorno size for rising crust pizza that fit in there perfectly. 
but I've been very tickled with it so far. It's been a great thing to have. Look at how nicely it cooked up these pork chops. And I'll be sure to keep you posted on anything else I do in here and let you know how we like it. I checked my temperature. Everything looked great. I made some of this Cheeto macaroni and cheese. It tasted okay if you can get over how orange it is. This was my daughter's plate. And next I'll show you my plate because I did end up making just some regular macaroni and cheese because I just could not get over how orange it was. That was a great meal just to use that little oven. Now these are some breakfast sandwiches that I made a while back before my oven tore up, but my videos have been so long I just haven't got to show it to you. But I had some English muffins and looks like probably four biscuits that were just left over. And I'm just putting them on a baking sheet and I'm just going to kind of toast them up a little bit. Now each one I've opened up and I'm just putting some regular old American cheese singles on them. And then I have some of the pre-cooked frozen sausage. I like to use this because the patty's nice and large and I like to cook it in the oven. You can do it in a skillet, but I just think it browns up so much nicer in the oven and I like that color on it. So I just took a piece of sausage and put that on top of the cheese. And now you're going to wonder, why do I have this cookie cutter in my skillet? But <laughs> I have it sitting in here. It's the only metal cookie cutter that I have. So I've sprayed it with cooking spray, and I'm just going to crack my egg into it. I want my egg to like stay close together like an egg McMuffin. And I didn't have any little circle rings. But you know, I don't like a lot of extra stuff in my kitchen taking up room and this works just fine so I cracked my egg in it I broke the yolk and I'm just gonna let it cook like that for just a little bit once it's set I can remove my cookie cutter and looky there I have a nice little heart-shaped egg sometimes they're not always a heart but that's fine I'm not really going for the shape I'm going for keeping the egg close together because I want it to get a little fluffy like a McDonald's egg McMuffin so I'm just doing each one of those individually. Is this a little bit of trouble? Yes, it is to do each one separately. But you know what? I had the time that day. You could just do scrambled eggs and do a bunch at once. But this was fine. I didn't mind doing it. I know my husband gets tired of eating those frozen biscuits every morning before work. So this was just a little treat for him. I hit them with a little bit of salt and pepper and I let them sit there and cool off completely. Then I just wrapped each one individually in a sheet of aluminum foil. I packaged them up in a big Ziploc freezer bag and put them in the freezer and then at night he could just pull one out and set it in to the refrigerator and he would be good to go the next morning. Be sure that your notification bell is turned on. You don't want to miss next week. I've got two very exciting videos that will help you with some last minute holiday preparations and I don't want you to miss them. I know this week's video has been a little bit different working without my oven, but you know what? It's kind of been a nice break. As always, I thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope that you'll have a blessed week to come. And until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.